In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist on the third Sunday of Easter. The service takes place in our homes, in the shadow of Liverpool Cathedral. We are delighted that you are joining us for this time of worship, which will be led by some of the clergy from the cathedral. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Cathedral Company includes the Sepas community, whose services on Sunday normally take place in Farsi. Today's first reading is read by a member of the Sepas community. اعمال رسولان باب دو آیه چهارده و سی و شیش الا چهل و یک آنگاه پتروس با آن یازده تن برخاست و صدای خود را بلند کرده خطاب به دیشان گفت پس قوم اسرائیل جملگی به یقین بدانند که خدا این عیسی را که شما بر صلیب کشیدید خداوند و مسیح ساخته است چون این را شنیدند دلریش گشته به پتروس و سایر رسولان گفتند ای برادران چه کنیم پتروس به دیشان گفت توبه کنید و هر یک از شما به نام عیسی مسیح برای آمرزش گناهان خود تعمید گیرید که عطای روح القدس را خواهید یافت زیرا این وعده برای شما و فرزندانتان و همه کسانی است که دورند یعنی هر که خداوند خدای ما او را فرا خواند پتروس با سخنان بسیار دیگر شهادت داد و ترغیبشان کرده گفت خود را از این نسل منحرف برهانید پس پیام او را پذیرفتند و تعمید گرفتند در همان روز 
حدود سه هزار تن به دیشان پیوستند. این از کلام خدا. او را سپاس بود. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had, had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know these things that have taken place in these days? He asked them. What things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that he had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, and they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them, them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, they walked ahead as if they were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in and stayed with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On the first Easter morning, there wasn't a great deal of celebration and joy around. Rather more bafflement and bewilderment, a lot of grief. Because the disciples had come down to where Jesus had been buried and found instead an empty tomb, the stone rolled away. No sign of Jesus, just some folded grave clothes where his body had been laid. And they couldn't put two and two together. The only thing they could work out from this was that the body had been stolen. Who had stolen it? Was it the authorities? And so they were grieving. Some of their friends had said they'd seen visions of angels saying, he's not here, he's risen. But on that Easter morning, disciples could only assume the worst 
And as they walked disconsolately away from the empty tomb, their fear was that if the authorities had taken the body, how long would it be before they'd come for his followers too? So they scurried away to their homes to hide and wait to see what would happen next. Well, that afternoon, two of the disciples were heading away from Jerusalem, back to their home in Emmaus, a village about six, seven miles away. They were feeling really fed up. And as they were talking, they were joined by a stranger. Well, at least they didn't recognize him. He just drew alongside them and asked them, what are you talking about? They thought this was a bit strange. Heads were down low, they were downcast and fed up. They said, well, are you the only person around here who hasn't been part of what's been going on? And he said, well, don't you realise it all fits together? And he started them telling them stories, stories from the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures about the Messiah and how the Messiah must come and suffer. Now they didn't realise it at the time, it was only later on that they discussed that their hearts were burning as he told them these stories. But at that point they were just locked in their grief and the stranger walked alongside them. And as they were coming through to Emmaus, he linked all these stories together of how the Messiah would have to suffer before eventually he would rise in glory. As it was getting to sunset, the disciples invited the stranger to have supper with them. And so as they sat down and shared food and drink together, something remarkable happened. The stranger took bread and broke it. And all of a sudden, the disciples realised that the stranger was Jesus. Their eyes were opened. Jesus disappeared. And suddenly it all started to fit into place. All the stories he told from the Old Testament about the Messiah having to suffer and to rise again. And in the breaking of bread, it reminded them of the feeding of the 5,000 of the Last Supper. Jesus saying, this is my body. And if you want to explore more about the breaking of bread and why it was so significant to those disciples and to us today, have a look on the Prayer for Liverpool website, where our canon theologian, Leslie Francis, has put some resources to help us explore this remarkable event and why breaking bread is so important to us. Maybe we're a bit like those disciples today, walking on a road that is unfamiliar. Easter doesn't seem quite the same, does it, this year? Maybe we're feeling a bit downcast, a bit cut off from God. Maybe he is there somewhere, but we're not entirely sure where. But you know, Jesus comes alongside us in the ordinary, the stuff of everyday life. He comes alongside us in our grief and loss. He doesn't push in, but he just gently walks alongside us. And sometimes we may not even recognise him. Perhaps it will be as we read the Bible, maybe in our prayers, maybe as watching virtual breaking of bread seems very strange. Maybe it's in words of encouragement spoken to us or spoken by us. Maybe it's in random acts of kindness to us and from us. Maybe there's something more profound going on here as our values and what's important in life are being reshaped by this current crisis. And maybe as we do that, like those first disciples, as we hear from Jesus in these strange times, that his words will come to burn with fire in our hearts. Hallelujah.
Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we pray at this time for our cathedral community and for all those involved in supporting and sustaining worship from their homes. Give strength to those challenged by the isolation that they feel. Lift up all who feel lonely and help us to know that we will rejoice amongst friends and feel fellowship again. Amen. Dear Lord, Please bless the doctors and nurses and all our key workers. We pray for you to give them strength and resilience during these times as they help heal the sick, reassure the anxious and vulnerable. Please protect them as they go about caring for others whilst often selflessly putting themselves at risk. We pray for their families. Give them the courage to support their loved ones. Inspire and invigorate the researchers who are seeking answers in order to reduce the disease's spread. Forgive us for the times when we have taken these services for granted. Please give us the strength to stay at home so we can do our part and flatten the curve. We pray for those who have lost their lives in this pandemic. May they rest in peace and rise again in glory. We pray for their families and loved ones. Give them comfort in their time of grief. We pray for our government and those in charge. Give them wisdom and clarity in their decision making that they may lead with compassion. Heal our world. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Christ broken for me. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As this service draws to a close, the Cathedral Choir sings one of the best-known hymns. It is often associated with funerals, with football terraces and with the evening Written by Henry Francis Light shortly before he died, aged 54, it is inspired by the words of the two disciples as they walked unknowingly beside the risen Jesus along the road to Emmaus. Stay with us, they said, for it is almost evening. And the Lord did so, unfolding the scriptures for them and making himself known in the breaking of the bread. These are words to bring hope and strength to many who, like Henry Light himself, found themselves walking through the valley of the shadow of death.
Lord be with you and also with you. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.